day. I think I had 300 boxes, and it was like 7.30, and it was pitch black, and, um, and it was raining, really? cats and dogs, and I called, and I'm like, I'm like, I can't see the road, I don't feel safe, what should I do? And they were like, you can be on the road until 9 p.m. And this is seven, so you had two more hours. I had like an hour and a half, and, uh, and I was like, what I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Let me rephrase said, this. I don't feel safe, and they were like, "They're like, we're looking at your thing now. You have like 15 more stops. You can do it." And I'm like, "So from you're Amazon telling Central me?" I said, or whatever. I said yeah, "Well, the, my yeah, my dispatch, dispatch." So, so I said, "So what I'm hearing you say?" I said, "What words? Like, what happens if I come back now?" And they were like, "We will write you up for not, what, and you'll be spoken to by the manager." And I said, "Really? Okay, then let me tell you this right now. I'm going to deliver these 15 packages, but then I quit." Because this is bullshit. <laughs> and I can't see the road. So yeah. I'm giving you my two weeks notice right now. Hello in there. Hey, what's so important? What you got here that's worth living for? <laughs> Welcome back to Blade. I am here with my dear friend and colleague. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? Right. Yeah. Sounds good. Friend yeah. and colleague. Yeah. Um, Danielle Service, who's an amazing human being, a teacher, a writer, a thinker, an explorer, and a yoga instructor, and so many other things yet to be discovered. <laughs> <laughs> That's very sweet. Thank you. And. And it's not you know a huge part of who you are, but it's still kind of a cool fact. Is that she, Robert Service? <laughs> <laughs> listen, I can't. I know. No, nobody gives a crap about this. In but but me, so, yeah, yeah. But you do. But the, my Western friends do. Yeah, around yeah. here they're like service. Uh, you know what service? <laughs> but, you know whatever. <laughs> service and with a smile. Yeah. We change your first name to customer. <laughs> ah, the dumb jokes. <laughs> and by the way, to our viewers out there, this is. I think I've told you this before. My dad has a rule, and he taught me young age. And it's like something that I can easily teach people because it's real simple and you can remember it. And it's an inviolable rule. Like it will always work. And that is never make a joke or any kind of comment about people's name. Absolutely. Ever. No, he's brilliant. That's ever. absolutely right. It never, ever, ever, yeah. ever goes over well. Ever. Well, I've been a teacher for 21 years and I can tell you the same thing. It's very personal. Your it's name. your name. It's your name. It's part of who you are. Absolutely. And I have thank. Goodness, I've messed up a lot of things in my life. Yeah. But I've taken that. No, <laughs> yeah, you messed really up a lot. Smart, no, really but but and that I haven't. And I literally, I met a guy named John. This was like kind of my crowning achievement. I met a guy. He introduced himself as John Lennon. And I said, "Good to meet you, Mr. Lennon." Yeah. That's all you need to say. That's his name. I'm not gonna say anything that he has. That he's gonna go. Oh, that's so clever. Oh, you're so smart. <laughs> Oh, you've heard the Beatles, you know? <laughs> Never. So, Danielle Service. Um, but she is related to Robert Service, the great poet of the Northwest, who yes. I grew up. Turns out a lot of his stuff is kind of dark. Very and, dark. And also kind of lousy and bitter and terrible. And, and yeah, no, I mean, he wasn't, he wasn't a lovely human. I don't want to speak Phil Ill of him. This is Phil Ill. my family yeah. on video. But, but yes. there was some, there's some issues right. there. But he has He's some. A poet. He has. He, I mean, he, a yeah. dark, adventurous poet. Dark, we adventurous poet. Yeah. If you get a chance, I think everybody should read because they're classics. Yeah. One, the cremation of Sam McGee, which is a comical classic. Mm -hmm. There are strange things done in the midnight sun by the men who well, moil for gold. <laughs> the Arctic, Arctic trails, trails have their secret tales that make, make your blood, blood run cold. cold. The northern lights have seen queer sights, sights, but the queerest they ever did, did see. see. Was the Tonight night on the barge of Lake, Lake LaBarge I cremated, cremated Sam McGee. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, that's a classic. Just read that. I but can hear it too if you want to even better. Yeah. And richer with some not so PC elements, but you know, product his times, is Call the Wild. The Call the Wild, his poem. I don't um, know. I haven't read that one. Really? In a long time. A long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I read it. You know, every couple of years, and it stirs me up to go out in the wilderness and uh, 
I'll have to read that. I used to have the men who don't fit in yeah. on my wall. And I, That's I a little too close to home for me. Yeah. It's a little too close to home yeah. for me, too. Exactly. And, and I didn't like having to stare at it on my wall. No, um, no, but yeah. Call the Wild is good. I'll check that out. Um, Something it's inspiring good. is good. It's inspiring. A lot of this stuff is not inspiring. So, and he was your great, great uncle. Yes. Yeah. Once removed, I think. Once removed. I always forget. I have it written down somewhere. Yeah. So we don't have an enormous amount of time, and I just wanted to... We don't have to rush, so okay. just for you. Okay. I want to pick your brain about some things, and then we can also just, you know, it's not an interview. Like, I can share some things, or we can talk. Okay, so it's not an interview. No, I'm you can interview me a little okay. bit. Okay, yeah, I'd like That's, that. That's, you know, it's one of my favorite so okay. topics. Okay. <laughs> it's embarrassing, <laughs> but, you know. Um, so... Could I show my students? Because I did tell them about you at one point that I had an anarchist friend. Okay. Yeah. Well, be careful because, you know. Okay. Oh, well, and that's why I didn't want to. I'm mean, really sorry. So we can get into that a little bit. Okay. Well, um, we don't have to, though. But Obviously. I don't know. I mean, your students, says, you know, I I thought maybe about, you know, talking about writing or talking about sure. recovery. Do you, get, do you talk about recovery? Absolutely. Is that something? Okay. Yeah. So you were one of the first people in my life to really, like, you know, I met you, you're vibrant, you're in a yoga, you're exciting, you know, you're like so alive. And, and then I hear like you sharing about your past and some darker things in your past and you talked very glowingly of AA and the system and what it was for you at a time in your life when you needed it. Yes. And you seem, you know, I've known people every shade of AA, right? Some people, they just like to go when they're drunk and be around, you know, whatever. Right. And other people, and so like in the grade of things, you know, from like, you know, low level, whatever, mid, people are trying, people are trying hard, people yeah. are cheating, but you're like up in the ninja level, like you're up there. I mean, wouldn't you say, I mean, you, I as far as your commitment, no then. ninja level in AA. <laughs> like, ninja, not exactly. Um, uh, also, I'm thinking of the traditions right now, which say that you're not supposed to discuss uh, right. That at the level of press, radio, and film, so we can just call it a spiritual program. A action. program, right? Go on. A twelve-step um, program. Or is I program? did work a rigorous twelve-step program, if that's what you mean by ninja sure. level. Sure. Um, but for me, that was really important because I, I, I'm a very I, Amy Irvine said I was very dutiful once. I remember I got angry dutiful. With her. Really? Yeah, because I didn't want to be seen as that. I wanted to be seen as a creative tour de force. And then I realized that she was right. That I am very dutiful. But and do you, you see those? Being, to me, beautiful and creative is compatible. Tell me how. That's interesting to me. I think I haven't reconciled those two really? aspects of who I am internally, and that's why it bothers me. But it doesn't bother me anymore, because I think she's right. But I mean, because to me, but, so to me, growing up as I did, like, duty is one of the highest virtues. Yes. That is, uh, yes, doing I agree. Duty, yes. Right? I mean, and you think of both, so I have, you know, sort of military background, like my parents, grandparents, yeah. my dad, or the other thing. Uh, the idea of you do your, you know, you do your duty. And then also kind of like the Aristotelian sort of like, what is your nature? The idea of nature is kind of like, we think of nature as sort of pushing yeah. you ahead, but the Aristotelian idea of nature is like pulling you, like your ultimate goal is your nature. So it's pull your telos, you know, it's pulling you towards some, some, you know, so you're like your duty is that thing out there. So like a Buddhist eightfold path kind of thing. Well, yeah, like your dharma, right? Yeah, that, yes. So to me, like a creative person, like what I've learned since kind of I met you and I, you know we did a writing program together and stuff. One thing I've learned about the creative process that seems pretty obvious, but to me, why I learn it is that the people that are successful. Mm -hmm. People right. that work their butt off. Yeah, I know. That, it's I, not that, that complicated. Such, it's not. And it was such an epiphany for me, too, in the program. I was, it was like <laughs> my third semester that I came to that. And it was, I was watching Craig and Amy and all that. I was like, wow, they work really, really yeah. hard every single day. And to me, that's inseparable from a concept of duty. That's a right? good point. That's a very fair Like point. when you work hard, it's because you're doing your duty. Right? That's a really good point. Because duty is what you do when you don't feel like doing it. Yeah. And work... You don't feel like doing it. No, we're lazy human beings. We're, we're terrible. Lazy. Wicked lazy. We're in New England. We're in New England. We are overlooking, I wish you could see it, beautiful uh, view of Manchester, New Hampshire. It is. What do you see in the day? It's, it's going to be exciting. Yeah. Live free or die. 
And Danielle has lived, has stayed out in Montana, has visited me. Paul has been my very wonderful host several times. I've been blessed to have her stay uh, in the guest house. And then once you visited, I don't think we even crossed paths. You slept no, in my bed. That's right. Yeah, for five days. That was so key because I turned around from Alaska. I had no idea where I was going. That was my first time on the road. Yeah, you gone. were. Yeah, trying and to sort things out. you left your door open for me. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I needed a place to be. And there I was in Bozeman. There you were. And I was yeah. gone. And um, it was kind of cool thinking I can offer that. You know, it's, yeah. it was to me, I've got a buddy who, um, I don't think you've met him. He's, a, he's an army buddy. But he talks about... Um, like the work it takes to develop friendships. Mm-hmm. And, yes. and one of the things he talks about as sort of part of the process of developing friendships is calling on your friends. Like, yeah, no, because they need leaning on them. Yeah. yeah. Because it's such an honor to be leaned upon. Like to me, when I'm that guy that people say, Hey, can I crash there? Or yeah. that guy, my phone rings at three in the morning. My car just wrecked. I don't want to talk about it. Come pick me up. Right. Like, wow. Yeah. They thought they could call me. No, that's It's true. an honor. And it develops. I mean, it really builds that trust. It does. Do you ever feel like you've been taken advantage of in that position? Uh, no? Not in that position. Okay. Because the thing is, they're vulnerable. If they're truly vulnerable, then you're both vulnerable, right? right. Like, how can they be no, taking advantage of you? Because they're so I mean, vulnerable. Had any repeat like people that were like, oh, oh God, it's them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But the, you know, there. But it's yeah. never that three a.m. It's never okay. that. It's okay. more like, you know, people that are taking advantage of you usually the nickel and dime you. That's very true. You know, it's like the repeated, you know, can I borrow your car for just the afternoon yeah, or whatever? Uh, like, it's, it's always a little. Yeah, it's the nickel yeah. and dime, and no, you know, they don't go for the. Yeah. Anyway. Danielle service. How are you so, doing after? Go ahead. <laughs> you had a long drive today, duty. my friend. So, yeah, duty. so you were a dutiful, you know, you took this process of sobriety mm-hmm. dutifully. And one of the things that you were talking about that I... I and it's really, not as linear. Well, go ahead. Finish your thought. Well, I just wanted to talk about that the idea of restoring relationships. Yep. Um of addressing previous wrongs. Okay. What's that called? Amends. Amends. But everybody thinks it's saying I'm sorry and it's not. It's almost so what the is exact it? opposite of that. Yeah. I, I've been taught. I don't know, you could probably talk for hours. I could, know, you know. so I'm just trying to think how to sure. condense it. I'll just tell you what I was taught. The um, Initially I was taught, and I, and I still hold to this because it's true, and what I did for me. Like when you, when somebody's an addict, they're always sorry. Right. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm so sorry, sorry, I didn't mean yeah. it. And like they don't mean it. Yeah. It is sorry. It's it's terrible. Yeah. You know, like there's no it's it's so I wanna have compassion for that. But when you go through the pro look, first of all, when steps one through eight, you've gone through this whole process, you've changed into a different person, you see all these things about yourself that you didn't see prior. You get to the eighth step, you make the list of people, nine steps you're amend. And amend is literally amending of harm. So you go and you sit and you say to a person, sometimes there's a script, sometimes not. Um, the first way I did it, did you say, hi, uh, my name is Danielle. These are the way I've harmed you. These are the ways I've harmed you. Uh, I'm willing to do whatever it takes to make things right. And then really? you shut up. And then you listen to them speak about what they meant. You just give them a space to whatever. But that's not the important part. Like, okay. you don't get to just walk out of there and be like, yeah, I'm man. such a great person, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. <laughs> you, um, like for me with my brother, um, when I made amends to him, my niece had just been born. Okay. okay, so I made a very distinct point to go down there and babysit her constantly. And okay. I mean, so for 10, 12 years now, I've been a huge part of her life. Sure. That's the action after the event. That's it's the kind way. of a restitution. It is restitution, yeah. but it's but it's not the I'm sorry, it's not the BS, it's none of those. It's none of it's those showing. Things. It's showing, yes. And you show it by your changed actions. And I think that the duty part comes into play for me That's there, good. too. It's beautiful. It's one of the most healing, I lovely like... things that I've ever done. And I did that for a lot of people. Really? Yeah. That's really missing. You know, for all the weird stuff in the Old Testament, Yeah. there's a lot of judicial things about restitution. And the nice thing about restitution is that it's healing for both yes. sides. Yes. That's you know, and like, yeah. and it's not, you can't undo those wrongs. Right. And it's not pretending that that makes up for it. Right. But and you're able human. to show yeah. 
it's just something cleansing about it, yeah, you know? Yeah. And if I, you know, found myself stealing from somebody, and there's proverbs that say, you know, don't hate somebody for stealing if they're hungry. But still, if you catch them, they still got to pay it back. It's like threefold or sevenfold. Yeah. There's a different round. Whatever. It's, you know, it's a thousand years ago. And they're, you know, fumbling with ways of, you know, dealing with these things. But now, you know, you rob somebody's house. You never pay them back. You go do whatever years in some strange, and I don't want to get into criminal justice. Yeah. No, but it's a huge topic, and it's a mess in America. Criminal it's justice. It's a problem. Criminal justice yeah. system. It's a, yeah. it's a bad, bad system. But anyway, um, so you did that and you found some healing through it. More importantly, they found healing. They found healing. I I mean, I don't want to be like, oh, I'm so glad they found it. But like at the same time, it's, that's the important piece. You're not doing it. They're not doing it for you. That's good. That's a good reminder. (laughs) You're doing it for them. It's keeping you sober. It helps you. It's getting you, it's keeping you sober. But it's not this solipsistic, uh. No. And it shouldn't be. And no. if it is, you're doing it wrong. You're doing it wrong. <laughs> but do you find so, that so, same pattern you're able to, like, obviously, you know, you're not dealing with that anymore. You know, you've been sober and you're healthy, whatever. Yeah, it's but still, years. we all screw up. Yeah. Like, we, do. we say mean things. And that's part of amends, too. And yeah, so that's what, like, you can do it in the moment, too. It doesn't yeah. have to be a big formal thing of people that you hurt when you were altered. And so, like, a lot of times, it, like, if I get upset at school, sometimes I'll be like, sure. sorry, I'm tired. Yeah. I'll try not to do that. This is what happened. You know what I'm saying? It's just yeah. correcting your action in the moment. No one you, expects you, you to learn a right. pattern. Yes, yes. That, and that's what it's about. It's about imprinting the pattern of right action into your psyche and consciousness. My brother had this line, I don't know where he got it, but he said the other day to me, when you're young, you're defined by your dreams. As you get older, you're defined by your habits. That's bro- you got a good family. I'm telling you, it's the best. <laughs> yeah. But... And that rings true. And that patterns and having the same thing, right? Like yeah. you realize life is a series of habits and mm-hmm. patterns and you can change them slowly over time, but that's what defines you. It does. And I appreciate that more as I'm older. I used to think that's what would make me old, but it's not. No, I think it makes me younger. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah, yeah. It actually, it makes you, over that realization, it makes you a human being. It yes. makes you like aware of yeah. who you are. And this lurching and sense of freedom of like, that's nothing. It's really nothing. Just right. lurching around and casting about, you know, until you've proven it through habits. Yeah. You're just. You but know, don't you think there's something to be said for lurching? Or, I mean, like, you're. This is your season for it. Yeah. There's a season for it. How um, quantifiable should that season be? Or like. Shorter than people <laughs> think. <laughs> That's true. Dial it back. Like, I don't know. What's a habit living that way after a while, as you and I both. Yeah, I mean, we're both, you know, we're both single, Yeah. you know, and uh, have sort of adventurous lifestyles, yeah. you know. And um, don't mind being on the road and having right. experiences. But, yeah. but I remember my dad's, you know, it's like, lockdown family, you know. <laughs> no, it was great. But my dad, like, yeah. he once told me, he says, Paul, and it was a good letter. He's trying to get these great letters. Pithy. Yeah. But he said, Paul, you don't have to be predictable, but you do have to be dependable. And that sticks in my mind too. That There's a, a difference point. between being predictable and being dependable. That's true. And it's interesting that he would use that duality. Yeah. Because he understood like predictable yeah. is, you know, you set in your ways right. or whatever. You're not, you're not growing. But when you say yeah. you're going to do something, you should do it. You do it. Yeah. And people will know that you're dependable. Your dad was a teacher, right? Yeah. What kind of teacher was he? Ah, everything. Okay. <laughs> like you. Like mostly you, like yeah. you. It, mostly language arts, but then also history. Oh, no kidding. Okay. High school, um, though? High school, mostly. Okay. But up at community college and okay. some university stuff. And He taught at IIA, which was actually the other program that I almost they have at MFA. Okay. Uh, the... IAIA is Institute um, American Indian Art Institute. Okay. Institute of American Indian Arts. Where Anyways, it's Santa Fe. Santa Fe. And they, like have, they have a cool uh, MFA program. And it was the other one I got into. It was tough oh, and, was it? Uh, to decide. Okay. Um, and Sunbeam, I think, is a little bit involved there. He's talking okay. a little bit. 
But anyway, um, I mean, no, that's okay. I was going to ask you. I didn't ah. know if you had a train of thought going. I was going to uh. ask if you still spent time in Albuquerque. That's another place I think about going to. Uh, Albuquerque is a cool city. It is a cool. It's interesting. And it's even funky. with Breaking Bad, it's yeah. still I feel underrated and cheap. It is, well, that's what I yeah. It's crazy. I cheap. know. That's what if you're making East Coast money and you go out. Oh there, heck yeah! <laughs> you're in high cotton. I don't think you're allowed to say that anymore. Um. um yeah, Albuquerque's cool. The Southwest is cool. The Southwest, the the whole West, I think, is absolutely beautiful. Yeah, it's kind of. I miss it a lot. You I know, think I mean, it every day. I'm sure it's been said before, but the West is to America as America is to the old world, right? So. And as a, the old world meaning Europe, Greek, that's what I thought. Yeah. But like. So, like, you know, Europe thinks of America, or you know, traditionally the relationship is like America. Oh, okay, I got it. It took me a second. Frontier or whatever. Like, in in America, okay. right. the West is, you know, adventure and frontier and all that. Well, it's so different from here. Like, no. we're all on top of each other here, and we're all racing toward... I mean, you should see the interstate in the morning. Every morning, I'm like, what am I doing? But, I mean, there's traffic in Denver. <sighs> it's not the same vibe. No, it's a different vibe. Not the same intensity. Well, I mean, you're in Massachusetts. You're near Massachusetts. I am very close. It's a Massachusetts vibe here, yeah. Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! These people have <laughs> wicked retarded! <laughs> no, we can can't try it! So much traffic, we're gonna die. Um, I want to take a second yeah. to talk about an even different world. Okay. Much different than the West or the East. That's Bhutan. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, unlike. 99.98% of the American population, and that's probably very low, probably much higher percentage who have not been to Bhutan, because mm -hmm. it's a very hard country to get into. I'm sure impossible now. It is impossible now. But yeah. previously very, very, very right. hard. Yeah. Um, you spent eight months? Five. Five months in Bhutan, and it's kind of primitive. I don't know why I'm telling you what it's like. No, 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 no. go ahead. I'm just kind of I'm thinking, okay, you were in Bhutan. So what most people know of Bhutan, if any, you know, so if people know anything of Bhutan, of course they know on the happiness index. Right. Gross national happiness. GNH. It's the happiest country out there. Um, and it's beautiful. Where is it? It's in the Himalayas. It's in the Himalayas, yeah. Is, is it a, adjacent? Is it contiguous to Nepal? Nepal? No, no. Uh, India bumps up in between it. There's just a slice okay. of it, and then Nepal. But it's not much India. Stones throw. Yeah, stone. Well, and that's. I mean, it's all through the Himalayas too. Okay. Bhutan is um, Eastern Himalayas. Okay. Eastern Himalayas. Got gotcha. you. Wait, am I? Am I messing? I got a wow. But wait. Okay, there's the Himalayas. Yeah, Eastern Himalayas. Eastern Himalayas. Yeah. The right way. The right way. Yes. Okay. <laughs> We're looking, yeah, we're looking, looking there's, a, the paint there's a beautiful map of the world. Uh, map of the world. Isn't that nice? I like that. That is nice. Yeah. It's kind of the color scheme of a mood ring. Yeah, that's true. I hadn't thought of it that way. And I just needed something Australia awesome. naturally it looks really happy. I think green on a mood ring, I can't remember. Is green, yeah. Green is that is what that, it means? I don't know. Okay. We'll say, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's Australia. They got it is Australia. Yeah, what's not green? They, they do. Uh, you sure you can't get a visa there after your. Um, I forget how, but it's like some ridiculously young age, like 50. Like really? you, Yeah, you can't get a work visa or a, or a visa to live over there. It might even be younger. But ageism? There's a lot of countries that have that. Really? Yeah. Do I mean, they look I'm not at you? quite that young. I mean, you should say, but look at me! Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, no, not like... I'm 30. You should tell people you're 32. I don't think they... I, don't I think, think they, they fall for it. 32. 37. 37. <laughs> <laughs> Forty-two. Okay. <laughs> Forty-two. But so they, I didn't know they have that something like you know I spent some time in Australia. You did. I didn't so know that. I got a visa. But anyways, we're not talking about me or Australia. We're talking about Bhutan. Yeah. So tell us a little bit, just in a nutshell, what that was like, and more particularly. Anyway, go ahead. Just for, first, you just a nice way of putting people at ease. I'm glad you do the. Really? I can tell you. Yeah. No, you're good. Like you. You know, I'm very comfortable. I'm like, oh, well, we're talking about um, I think um, I've gotten more perspective on Bhutan and the Bhutanese now that it's been a year and more changed since I left. They're lovely people. Um, 
you use the word primitive. I'm not, I, I guess, compared to America, yes. But I think they have a lot of things right mm. that we don't have sight of anymore. Mm. And what we would initially consider primitive and what I considered initially primitive is really just a vast appreciation for the finer things that we have lost sight of mm. because due to our materialism in America. And that mm. sounds really haughty, and I don't mean it like that. Um, but I mean, you're including it. I mean, you're still an American, so it's not Yeah, like I'm very, I'm, I'm so American. <laughs> and that was and you kind of realize that a little bit. Well, I didn't, you don't realize it until you go to Bhutan, you know? <laughs> you know but, uh, like, I'm so American. And, that's what, and I'm teaching the Constitution now and all these other things. I'm like, you guys don't realize, like, how much this shapes who you are as a human. Yeah. Like, your freedom of expression. Well, and you know, you were in Afghanistan. Yeah. Like, But I mean, I was, you know, sitting in a Humvee, not exactly, uh, you know. You didn't get a cultural sense of... Well, I mean, I hung out with the locals okay. more than anybody, but... but didn't it give you a fundamental sense of who you were as an American, though, with the with the Bill of Rights and like all these other things that the founders came up with that like that, yeah. I mean, that intrinsically shapes who we are as people? We don't think about it. You don't. But I mean, I think about it because I mean, I come from a subset of you know America that thinks about it a lot. You mean what, when when you say subset of America that thinks about it a lot, you're defining yourself as what subset? Well, I mean, like. Constitutionalists. Okay, you know, got it. You know, people got who it. think about. No, I, I've heard you identify with a lot of different. I mean, so I, I, did, yeah. okay, I just wanted to make sure. But I mean, just yeah. I'm just talking about like conservative America, uh, and not I'm not you know I'm talking about anyway. Okay. Growing up, you know, people right. talk about the Constitution. Right. Um, but most most people don't, and no, we, I want to get that's into that. That's true. <laughs> but yeah, but being in a foreign country, you realize. And it's I just think, a yeah. different. So they have. They are um, well. They are a constitutional monarchy like Britain, but at the same time, they they're very. Well, it's also Asia, so they raise children differently. And, like how? Um, what are some of the differences? The children are ingrained very early with a sense of duty and responsibility, not only to the family, but also they're just subservient. You know what I'm saying? Like they're the workhorses in the family. And they're like the, the way they respect their elders, the way they take care of people. Um, the only time I've never felt more respected as a teacher really? than I did in Bhutan. Yeah, it's a lovely thing. I bet. Because um, that doesn't happen here. Certainly not in the way. <laughs> Perhaps different, you know, in different parts of the country. Yeah, and don't, and I, and not that there are plenty of people that respect teachers, but there's not the same. Not like, the same. It, no. And it's not. It's not that we expect reverence. It's just a more like, like education is formally kind of revered in general. And, it, and I don't know. There's a dark side of that too. Don't get me sure. wrong. Sure. There's a really dark side. Um, but I would say the Bhutanese focus a lot on family, happiness. Um, Happy? They focus on happiness. Uh, yeah, mean? they do. But they see it as like like they're they're also much more. Well, they, they talk about gross national happiness a lot, and you know they're I, and I don't know I don't want I'm also being careful because you got to be careful. Like I don't like I, I want to yeah. respect their culture. Sure, and but you got to be honest too. I, I do. It's true. And um, it doesn't. You're not doing them any favors by shining them on. I, let me let me highlight the differences between America and Bhutan. I'll do it that way. Um, well, I mean, we, go ahead. Well, you you were saying that they have some things that the, the the finer things or whatever in life. You had said something like that. That's the we miss in America. Community. community. Um, they also have a much stronger sense of culture. Like I remember my students asked me, Madame, what kind of dances do the students do in America culturally? What are their so because they have a dance for like every age group and every people, and I was like, we don't have anything, and they couldn't understand.